Hey, everybody. Welcome again. Toby Milroy here again, Vice President for AMS. And thanks so much for taking this time out of your schedule. I, I say this almost every time, but it, it's such an important habit that you build in building any business, much less martial arts business, that you, you take time out of your busy schedule to work on your business rather than just working in your business. So taking this time you know, on our Facebook Live today and our, on our webinar today to sort of close the door, shut off the cell phone, and focus on you know, uh, discovering strategies and systems that can help you grow your business. If you're not taking time out of your schedule to do that, nobody else is, right? You have to be the chief strategist in your business because nobody else is going to do it for you, right? So taking this time out is essential to do it. And I'm, I'm glad you've chosen to spend time with us today. So a couple things before we get started with our, with our uh, time today. Uh, if you can hear me on our chat, if you could put in a little comment in the chat down there and make sure you can hear me okay. I see my green light going up and down, but every now and then you never quite know what's going on out there. So if you could put a little note in the chat area, let me know that you can hear me okay. Um, second is, uh, uh, today we're going to be talking a lot about sort of systemizing the marketing in your school and systemizing a lot of the, of the things in, in your school that right now might take a lot of labor and how to sort of automate in some part, systematize a lot of that. And our guest today is going to help walk through what his experience has been and the results that he's getting with that. But before we get started with that, I've, I have I wanted to make sure I, I reminded everybody, I do have this uh, free report, how, how to use social media like a pro. So if you're, if you're struggling to sort of break into social media, if you're struggling to figure out how to get online marketing to really work well for your school, go ahead and put your email in the chat box below and I'll have my staff go ahead and send this out to you. Um, it's completely free, no strings attached or anything like that. Uh, they'll, they'll send this report to you. This is sort of like a, a primer, like a 101 outline on using social media, using online marketing, internet, internet marketing in general in your martial arts school. And there's some really fundamental concepts in here I really want to make sure that you get. One is this. So before we, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm testing my guest patience today, but before we get into that that specifically, this is sort of the concept I wanted to make sure that you really understood, this triangle of trust that we've talked about before. It's about how to sort of really maximize relationship on, on social and on internet. Uh, you know, when you're on Facebook, when you're on Twitter, when you're on these, these different platforms, uh, it's all about building relationship, right? And this sort of concept is one of the key ways to make relationship work online. So uh, it, just put your email in down below and I'll have my team send that out to you right away. Uh, and you can kind of get yourself sort of a, a primer, right? Sort of get the 101 fundamentals down on how to uh, leverage that th those strategies for your martial arts school. So thanks so much for that. Just pop your email in and I'll, I'll do that for you. So on to our guest today. Today we're joined by uh, Chief Instructor Juan uh, Villameister. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to get it wrong. Uh, and uh, he's a fifth degree black belt in Taekwondo and um, has really had sort of an interesting growth curve over the last four years. He opened his first martial arts school in 2014, uh, having worked in and helped build other schools as staff. Now he's in the ownership role and, and moving himself into the CEO role. Um, and he's gone through an amazing growth curve over the last two years. So he ran you know, one specific location and kind of got to a bit of a plateau and then figured out how to sort of break through those limitations and, and, and get to a whole other level. So, uh, uh, sir, thank you so much for taking time today to, to chat with us and, and share some uh, strategy and knowledge with our guest. My pleasure, Master Milroy. My pleasure. Good morning. Uh, okay. So let's, let's kind of start at the beginning. I think, I think it's always useful for our, for our folks. I think all of us come from a little bit of a, uh, we all sort of have a different path that we've taken to get to, you know, running a martial arts school, owning martial arts schools and, and, and that, um, if you could kind of walk me back through, let's start at the beginning of your martial arts career. You know, what got you into the martial arts? What, what did that look like? What were your objectives at the time? And, and, you know, where has that gotten you to, to this day? <laughs> well, um, I was born in Colombia, And so, uh, my older brother actually got me started in traditional karate at the age of five. Um, I started there when I got here at the age of eight. Um, I did different styles of martial arts, um, Aikido, Jiu Jitsu, all the good stuff. And um, at the age of 17, I actually had the a chance to work for Grandmaster Waika Kim at the headquarters location in Orlando, Florida. Um, after that, I joined the U.S. Navy, did my time. It was a great time. But I realized that um, changing lives and doing the martial arts was uh, my calling. Since then, I've been teaching and just rocking, sir. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I think like 
I, I, I think, you know, martial arts is one of these things that we've discussed this many, many, many times, but it's one of those things that really kind of gets under your skin, right? It kind of gets into your bloodstream and Absolutely. It, it kind of sort of, uh, uh, reminds me a little bit of surfing, right? You know, these guys that like to surf and man, it's all they do the rest of their life. They just, you know, they're, they're in search for that wave. So pretty interesting. So, okay. So, so then that brings us up to today. So let, let's bring us up to 2014. So 2014, you decided to take the leap. Yes, sir. And, and for people, you know, almost all martial arts school owners, you know, started as enthusiasts. We started as stylists, right? And then making the leap into, uh, you know, actually owning one of these things is a whole different animal, right? Um, describe to me what that felt like, what that was like, you know, what what sort of mental struggles you had to deal with and and what was sort of the catalyst and, and the opportunity to, to open a school in 2014? Uh, um, 2014, six months prior to opening, it was a rush. It was uh, seven days a week. Me and my team of three were out hitting the pavement every single day, trying to get 30 to 40 um little quick signups for the grand opening. I mean, we were eating our $5 a day, total budget. I mean, working from nine till about 11 at night, events on Saturdays and Sundays. It was an amazing rush. Can you close that for me, sir? When you get a chance, thank you. I, I, I completely forgot to uh, soundproof my room here before we got started. Yeah, no, I, I mean, and you got, you said something in here, I think that I, I don't want our folks to miss. And this is a critical mistake that you had not only the foresight and, you know, great mentors to help you with yes, uh, to not make, but here's a huge mistake that I see all the time in our industry. Uh, okay. I decide now that I'm whatever, I'm a third degree black belt. I want to go open my first martial arts school, uh, grand opening. I, I sign lease papers. I can't get access to the facility until let's say January 1st, just to make it, just to make it easy. Okay. January 1st. All right, great. So that means I start marketing on January 1st, right? Oof. right so describe to me your strategy on that so meaning that's the biggest mistake i ever you know one of the biggest mistakes i ever see so describe to me what your strategy was what the grand opening target was and, and sort of what the hustle looked like you know in in the process oh my gosh i mean it was we were planning six months ahead i mean six months prior to opening and we actually got delayed one month so i mean the hustle started thank goodness because we had the support of martial arts and um we had a little bit of money to support the promotion. I mean, we were we were in a plaza next to a Publix and a Target, which is really nice prime location. So we really got to take benefit of that. Um, every morning we will set up booths in Subway, uh, Pizza Hut places, and just started mingling and talking. I mean, it, it was energy draining. I'll tell you that by nine ten o'clock we were. I mean just drained you know a lot of yeses a lot of no's i mean a lot of no's i mean you truly have to have a passion for the martial arts in order to promote the way we did not even having a school that's open you know yeah 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 but so so under underscore again fundamental lesson here is new site opening new new uh, new location opening we don't wait until opening day to start talking about this thing right we're out there months ahead of time pre-enrolling people for trials, pre-enrolling people for programs. Uh, uh, in, in many cases with uh, a new location, finding a new lease, in many cases you can get access to the facility beforehand. Sometimes you cannot. Sometimes you cannot, in which case you're looking for other facilities. Like you said, we're looking at Subway, we're looking at Pizza Hut, we're looking at where can I put a tent up? You know, where can I put a table? Where can I put a booth? Doesn't necessarily have to be in the school, right? So, so big lesson number one, if I'm looking for new locations, Waiting until opening day is way too late, right? I want I want the key to go in the door for the first time, and have people in class, oh. you know, have full classes full of trials, right? Is that is that what, what was your experience there? What did, what did the first couple of weeks look like? Oh my God! Just, I mean, one week prior to opening, uh, we had a lot of leads. I mean, they were calling us on my cell phone all day. It was great energy. We opened up that door and we had white dough box for everybody that came in, then putting them on. We had about, we started out with about seven classes daily. Right. And uh, my God, the energy was great. We had, I mean, we were open Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. Great energy, a lot of children, a lot of adults. Uh, oh, I can, I took so many pictures. It was great. <laughs> great. Yeah. And, and so in, in, in your particular case, you did open in a prime location, which is very useful for walk by traffic. You get, you know, you get a, a fair amount of, uh, of traffic initially, especially with a new location. But 
again, let's not, you know, let's not miss the lesson here, right? The, the lesson here is, you know, four or five, six months ahead of time, we got to be out there making, making sure that when we stick the key in the door the first day, we have lots of people there. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, so, so you, you went through that. You had about a two year cycle of getting that school kind of up and running and you guys, you know, get an A for hustle, right? There's no question about that. And you kind of sort of hit a plateau. You got to about, you know, about 14, 15,000 a month or so uh, pretty quick. And then it kind of flattened out for you um, and then sort of had this next leap, right? And we're going to be talking a lot about that today. And, and, and a lot of that sort of was, uh, you know, if you go back about 18 to 24 months or so, that sort of started. Describe that to me. Describe what the transition in strategy looked like and describe to me what, what the, uh, you know, sort of trajectory was. Um, my priorities were very mixed emotional at that period. Um, yeah, I was I, I wanted more quality in the classroom, yet I knew that I had to be promoting and hustling to continue the numbers. Um, the back door was opening, so students were signing up uh, two, three, four, five months in. They were quitting. I didn't know what it was, so I was trying to figure out the why and how. Um, it was such an emotional time. So I didn't know which direction to go. At that plateau, when I was introduced to the I Enroll program, it uh, truly was a, a, a game changer for me. I, I immediately started seeing results with Texas and they started showing up and I didn't, I was so excited. I wanted to see, go deeper into the I Enroll program, you know, um, from then on, it was, it was truly game changer, sir, truly game changer. Yeah, so so essentially, uh, again, something that you said kind of intrinsically in there, essentially, uh, to get the school up to where it was, th- this is actually a very common thing, by the way. Uh, I'll take it out of context for just a minute. Um, there's a great book, uh, Marshall Goldsmith wrote a book called uh, What Got You Here Won't Get You There, right? And the cover photo on the book is really interesting. It's a, Well, I, I like it, but I think I might even actually have it. I do. Look at this. Just happen to have it in my uh, in my library here, but there's an interesting, uh, you know, cover. That ass it is pretty good, right? Sure. So, so the deal is for most martial arts schools, for most small businesses in general, the systems, strategies, tools, mindset, belief systems, all of that that sort of gets you to a given level. In large part, a lot of those are the same things that are keeping you at that level. Right. And so what you described kind of casually that I don't want to miss, right. I don't want our folks to miss is you kind of have to analyze that, right. You have to analyze why it is that you are where you are, why, you know, the numbers look like they know they look and, and you know, what, what caused that and how do I break through that, that plateau and those limitations. So what, what you're describing um, as you sort of implemented this iron roll process is sort of a shift from a lot of very, very, very high labor time intensive, labor intensive marketing strategies. I used to call it shoe leather marketing, right? Because you wear out the leather on your shoes, right? I mean, it's like, you know, you're beating the streets to shifting to this on these, these more online strategies that essentially don't take much, if any labor at all, right? Is that, is that an accurate definition? How would you describe that in your, absolutely, in your, uh, in your absolutely 1000. And, and what, what would you think? Okay. So, so let's walk through some numbers real quick here. So what I, what I have, Correct me if I'm wrong about this or, or emphasize where we need to. So in that 18 to 24 month process, you went from a 2,400 square foot location to a 3,500 square foot location. Yeah. Describe that process to me real quick. What was the, you know, what was the. You know, um, in the old was? school, the office was too big. The dojon was not enough. Um, two little bathrooms and two little locker rooms. Um but the training floor, the training floor itself, not big at all, you right. know, um, no mirrors on the sides, just basic, you know. The only cool part I loved was the ceiling, truly open big ceiling, yeah. you know. Uh, the new location now, bigger dojon floor, bigger dojon floor. The locker rooms are still about the same size, but much neater, new lockers. Bathrooms are much bigger, um, great access to them. Um, Office is just right, actually a little bit bigger than the other one, but does not affect the Dojon floor at all. I'm truly happy because every single inch in that Dojon counts for me, sir. 
right, right, right. Yeah. So, so, so again, part of, part that was intrinsic in there was moving from about 2,400 feet to about 3,500 square feet. I mean, that's a 50%. That's a, that's a pretty big move. And in fact, you, you actually accomplished uh, lowering your rent. And I lowered my rent too. Absolutely. We went from a prime location to a secondary and we went from paying almost, you know, eight a month. Now I'm paying four. It's, it's more benefit for us in the team. Yeah, from, from about 8,000 a month in rent to about 4,000 a month in rent for, for more space. Absolutely. And moving from, um, you know, class A prime commercial to just slightly not. And, and that, in some cases, is a real, is a real uh, you know, challenge. But what, with what you guys are doing with the island process, it, they don't have to drive by the location. We're, ex mm -hmm. you're, we're extracting them from social, right? So walk through that. What, what's, what's that experience been like? C because now you've gone from... You've you've added about twelve and a half thousand dollars a month to your gross, reduced your rent by fifty percent. So yeah. describe how all that works. How is that? How does that? How is that possible? Well, you know, I was a little scared when we went to a secondary uh, location. We we're only about four lights from the old one, actually. I mean, same street and everything. Right. Right. But um, it's truly amazing because the moment we started getting the texts and the emails on Atlas. Um, they started showing up and um, I mean, they started showing up and they were on them, their time for their appointment. And it actually made me sleep so much better at night, Mr. Milroy. Um, I was getting texts at two in the morning, one in the morning, six in the morning. And we all in sort of exciting. It was like winning the lottery every day. And uh, they came in, they did class. So now I was like, my mind totally changed. I said, okay, Let's master the hosting. Let's master that dynamic first class energy up the roof, sir. I mean, the energy just, I, I regained it, you know? Yeah. Okay. So there's like four things in there. I think we should unpack, right? Uh, one is, one is this, um, with typical online marketing and, and I was buying Google ads back when Google first started, right? I was buying ads on overture when Yahoo controlled the overture slash Yahoo controlled the pay-per-click market. Right. So I started, I started buying ads on, in uh, online in like 1993. Right. And in 2000 or so when uh, uh, Google sort of kind of got a foothold and had a really good ad platform, we, we used a lot of uh, a Google ads as well. And the, the constant struggle since then has always been the quality of the prospect that you're putting through your funnel. Right. And it's always been really flaky. Uh, you know, you know, you got to do what you got to do to get an opt in, right. You got to, you know, whether it's the free report or if it's the free video or whatever it is, you got to do what you got to do to get an opt in, but it takes dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of opt ins just to get one person to show up. Right. Yes. So what you're describing is a fundamental shift in that. And, and we may drill into some statistics here, but what you're describing is a fundamental shift in that with the iron roll process, what we've done, is we're pushing people through a funnel before they get to you, right? Before you get the notification of, of somebody who's interested in lessons, we're already pushing them through a couple of, of, of obstacles where they sort of really express their level of interest. So we're not just putting people in the funnel or putting people into your, into your opt-in stream that are just mildly interested in martial arts and they maybe clicked on something and they just wanted to download the free widget, right? These are people who are saying twice, they say two times in our system, we, we sort of force them twice. What they say, yes, I would like to try lessons with you. And oh, by the way, yes, I want to try lessons. And here's the time I'm going to come in to do it. Right? So this is a very different quality of online prospect. Is, is that, does that sound congruent with what your experience has been so far? That's 1000, sir. That's 1000. Absolutely. So, so again, we're not, what we're, what we're not trying to do is, you know, have, you know, 250 opt-ins a month of which six show up of with two enroll, right? What we're, what we're trying to do is, is do the work ahead of time so that you don't have to sift through all that stuff and worry about, you know, all, you know, all this follow-up that you might have to do to people who are totally unqualified, who live outside the area, who don't really have a deep enough interest, you know, who don't meet the demographic and psychographic profile. These are much higher quality prospects. So let, let's stick a pin in that. That's a super yes. important factor. Absolutely. The, the next thing that you mentioned is, and you might drill into this, but you know, you're getting a text message at one in the morning at two in the morning at three in the morning. What, well, you know, what's your analysis of that? Like what, uh, you know, if we look at a regular martial arts school who's like closed those hours of the day, 
you know, this is an opportunity that you'd just be missing, right? Oh my God. It was exciting. It was like, uh, having a new date. Oh my God. I got another date. I got another date. I got another date. Oh, it's game on. I mean, you know, waking up and getting ready for work. I'm like, okay, let's, let's start getting them ready. Let's call them. Let's set up that appointment. So energizing, not only for me, but for the staff, because the staff is also connected as well. So they'll, they'll call me, Hey, sir, we got four coming in tomorrow. It, totally different than, okay, we got to go hit the pavement and find four, you know, right. Right. Uh, game changer, sir. Truly game changer. Yeah. Let's, we, we, we need to drill into that in a second here too, but let, let's, let, let me rewind just a little bit. So one of the things that we're seeing that you, you described uh, uh, with an interesting perspective is that as we're buying traffic on social, we're buying traffic on Google, we're buying traffic all over the place. But as we're, as we're collecting this traffic, you would be shocked to find out how late in the evening people are online looking at stuff at how, right? The, the, the three hottest times for traffic on Facebook in general, this is based on traffic's research, is uh, uh, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 9 p.m., right? So think about what that is. That's number one, 10 a.m. is when people get to work. So they get to work, they log into their computers, they check a couple of emails, and oh, by the way, let me check in on Facebook, right? Well, of course, because they're working. Why else would you want to check on Facebook? Because you're working, <laughs> right? And then three o'clock, so they go to lunch, they certainly don't want to interrupt their lunch break. Right. So they go to lunch, they come back to their office, they log back into their computer, check a couple of emails. And oh, by the way, let's check in on Facebook. And then nine o'clock after they get home, they get dinner prep, the kids are to sleep, you know, the kids are asleep and whatever they jump back on, they, they jump back on social again. So what we're seeing is based on the time of peak traffic, but also the times where, uh, uh, you know, Facebook will, uh, move, move traffic to your ads, right. Uh, you, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of, uh, uh, at their behest, uh, we're seeing opt-ins at hours of the day where most schools are never open, right? Before schools are open, after schools are closed, uh, lunchtime, all that sort of stuff. So what you're describing is is a lot of untapped opportunity because you're not there to take an inbound call at that time. You know, people aren't there to take an inbound call at one o'clock in the morning or at nine o'clock in the morning, right? But that's where we're seeing some of our highest traffic. So th this has been, that just in and of itself has been sort of a fundamental shift in paradigm, right? So let's, let's, sort of close on that, right? I think that's pretty interesting and important for people to, to kind of get their head around. Okay. Um, now, the other thing that you mentioned here, and let's drill into that because I think you've got a, you've got a really good perspective on this. Um, you talked about energy, right? And you said that the fundamental shift in the staff focus now, instead of, you know, lacing up their boots and, and getting out in the community every day. I mean, I'm not saying you're not in the community, but they're out there every day beating the streets. Now it's they're preparing for the intro. They're preparing to teach a great lesson. They're preparing to teach classes that night. Describe that to me. So what, what does that shift look like and what, what's your analysis of that? It's a shift unlike any other, you know, in all my years of training, uh, this shift is totally new. It's a totally new era. Uh, my staff and me, our mind is set on quality now. It's set on making sure that every person that comes through that door has a smile and feels like a million bucks. Um, that first class is everything, I believe. And now the staff feels it. They really get to focus on that. And it just, it makes the job funner. It's, it's, I mean, there are some days that you just want, you dread stepping out there, you know, hitting the pavement. But now, um, even me, uh, the energy is great with the staff. They're excited. They have, we have the bonus system and it's, took an effect. I mean, it, it, they benefit, you know, sir. Yeah. I, I mean, like you, I live in Florida <laughs> and we have this thing down here called the sun <laughs> and it's hot. Right. It's, and so, I mean, many a day have I been in a heavyweight, you know, uniform in July, you know, marching the students in a 4th of July parade or, uh, you know, at the park, you know, doing the 4th of July thing or, you know, physical education class in an elementary school that don't have gymnasium. So you're outside. <laughs> and stuff. So, uh, you know, many, many, many of those. Now it works. It's great. It's, it's fantastic, but there's a cost and yeah. the cost sometimes isn't dollars. It's energy, right? Awesome. So what you're describing in, in, I would describe as this, you know, you have to make the transition in, in your martial arts school management to, to being 
that of the CEO of your organization. And that means that one of your primary responsibilities is managing the energy of your team and the energy of your, 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 uh, your business, the company, right? And so you've got a choice today. You and your staff can either spend from nine o'clock until three o'clock in the afternoon, sweating your butt off out in the park. It's going to work. It'll work, right? You can make it work. Trust me. I've done it for many, many, many years, right? Love it. Or, right, you can sort of use this more modern approach to this stuff. And now what you're working on from nine o'clock until four is, you know, how exactly can I deliver this piece of script in my intro lesson to really connect with the parent? How can I really get the parent involved in, in how do I get the, this next prospect who just, you know, hey, I just have a new, a new appointment today at four o'clock. It just popped up on my list. Mm, how can we get him to bring his friend today? How can we get him to bring maybe his entire elementary school class today, right? Those types of things, right? So managing that level of energy, elevating yourself to the CEO role, that of systemizer, right? Is like critically important. And, and you're, 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 you know, doing a fantastic job on that right now. I mean, adding 12,000 a month and 12,000 a month, that's 140, $150,000 a year. That's a lot of money, right? Um, and, you know, reducing expenses at the same time is not something to, you know, sort of look down your nose at, right? It's fantastic. Okay, great. So, um, man, I think we've accomplished a lot. You know, maybe one other item, sir, if you, if you wouldn't mind. One of the things that we're hearing is that now that your schools are uh, more visible on social, more visible online, that it starts to impact the stuff that you, you are doing in the community. Maybe you can walk me through that. Like, you know, how has it impacted when, when you do go do community events and you're focused on now the more big events, the larger events and things like that? How's that sort of ripple effect? Uh, it's been great. Um, our after school program is our prime program. And uh, we are just getting references from the students, um, references from the school teachers to principals. And they're calling and asking about our program, how they can be involved instead of me calling them on how we can be involved with them. It's a truly game changer. Parents from our community here in Lake Mary are very open to it. Um, they say, oh, you're, the, you're those guys on Facebook I see all the time. So we're not, I don't feel unknown anymore, actually. I feel part of the community more. And, you know, being a CEO is sort of new to me still. I feel it, you know, still new. And it's, it's a great feeling that they know who we are, sir. It's, it truly is. Game changing. Yeah, yeah. It, it really, you know... Martial arts, we've got a couple of problems that we're dealing with. And one of the challenges that we're dealing with is that, you know, 1985, when the Karate Kid hit, and, and we all lived through that sort of uh, martial arts brand changed, right? Before then, martial arts was really sort of not really appropriate for kids all that much. And you know, in, in the school that I started in back in the Midwest, man, you had to be like 12 or 13 years old to take lessons. You know, and I wasn't, I, I, one of the instructors was a friend of the family. So they kind of took me on as like a favor. Right. But you had to be 12 or 13 or 14 years old just to take lessons because it was like, right. It was pretty aggressive, right. Pretty serious. And so that was what the culture was like when the karate kid came around, all of a sudden parents and families got this idea of Mr. Miyagi and they said, wow, this is, this could be great for my child. Children flooded into the martial arts, but then just as quickly flooded out because these instructors weren't prepared. Right. Well, that brand, that sort of perception of the industry really helped the industry for about 20 years, right? Then this UFC thing really took on a life of its own and I believe, unfortunately, has somewhat changed the brand of what martial arts is yet again back to, man, that's really aggressive and somewhat violent and, man, I don't know, I, I might like to train myself and, and really gain those skills and it looks awesome and I love to watch it on television, but man, I don't want my kids doing that. I, it's not, it doesn't look like what I want my nine-year-old doing, right? Well, so now we've got that headwind that we're sort of fighting. Yes. And what, what you're describing is with what we're doing, what we're able to do now on social, we're able to target a group so narrowly and get so much content out in front of them. We're now able to sort of rebrand what we do, right? We're able to re-convince them, re-sort of educate them on what, what the martial arts is really all about in, in the sense that I'm describing in the sense of being appropriate for families and children and whatever your per particular message is in, in your case with the after school program, we have to overcome any negative skepticism that they might have about martial arts. 
but then also educate them on, you know, the, the value and benefit of this, of this transported after school program that, you know, instead of just a 45 minute martial arts lesson, this is a three or four hour, you know, uh, leadership course, right? Something that, you know, they, they might look at as an alternative to, you know, the closest thing they can get into to Harvard for their nine year old. Right. I mean, so, so, and, and that can be done now on social online much more effectively and efficiently than it ever could be in the past. I mean, we used to have to buy radio and television time and newspaper and billboards and park benches just to try to get the name out there and uh, damned expensive and no return. Right. I mean, very little results. Uh, now the, the dynamic is fundamentally flipped. Right. So, mm -hmm. and that, that describes what you're, what you're seeing. Right. I mean, especially with uh, penetrating elementary schools and things like that. Absolutely. Mr. Milroy. Absolutely. You know, the injury rate is uh, zero, you know? I mean, we keep students longer. That's that's the key. I want to see every single one of my students become black belt. That's, I think, any instructor, any CEO, that's their biggest want. And it's working. It's happening. And parents are not afraid anymore. Uh, and they're coming in with open arms. And the children are loving it. And they see that the martial arts is not just kicking and punching anymore. It's, it's a way of lifestyle. And there is no black eyes, you know, I love it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It, it, and, and that is, I mean, when you're fighting that kind of a headwind, um, when you can overcome that now people are coming in and they're already pre-framed, right? They already kind of get the idea. They already get the idea that, that this is an appropriate place for, you know, their child, appropriate place for them, whatever the case might be. And, and by the way, just as an aside, you didn't mention this, but I'll, I'll mention it just as a, as a, as a, a passing thought. Um, also in that process initially, in that sort of lead qualification process, in the in the appointment setting process, in the confirmation process, we're also sort of encouraging them to think about bringing a friend, to think about referring somebody, to think about the referral culture of your school. And you described that a minute ago, where if you put that seed in their mind early, now it, it, it has time to germinate, right? It has time to grow. You can't just kind of spring it on them four months later and say, oh, by the way, now you're a green belt, uh, you know, bring your friends in, right? <laughs> it's much better if you start that conversation early. W would Absolutely. you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, part of the qualification process. So good. So I think, you know, sir, I think we've accomplished a lot of the big, the big chunks. So let's just recap for everybody uh, uh, quickly here. So under your leadership... And certainly, you know, with, with the assistance of the eye enroll system, you've added $12,000 a month to the gross. Uh, almost all of that is going to the bottom line because you reduced your rent by half. Uh, so that's by increasing by, you know, 1,100 square feet, you know, almost 50% almost of the size of the school. Um, let me see here. You've, you've doubled roughly the size of the after school program, right? So now you know, you're making use of the extra space that you gained uh, in the move, which is, you know, very useful. You're spending more time focused on your staff and on managing your team's energy and their, their career, right? Which is very, very useful. And the last thing that you mentioned earlier is you're focused on systems. You're focused on the consistency of delivering, uh, you know, the intro lesson, the consistency of delivering the first class, the consistency of delivering the first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, right? Um, describe that to me if you would. D describe to me, you know, how you'd approach your staff on that type of a thing. Like what, how are you getting them focused on that stuff? You know, uh, during staff meetings, we, because just like a kick or a punch, if we're not exercising it, if we're not practicing that roundhouse, it's going to get weak. And the system is so simple. It's just like basics. I mean, we get to work the systems and from A to Z, we're done in an hour. And it's just every single time we go through it, it's more fresh. And I mean, they don't even have to think about it anymore. They know what to do when they come in. They know what to do when they uh, they press it on the, the cell phone. Um, we all do a little ding or a little dang here. The team is excited and no room for error. The system works and we are keeping them. There is no back door anymore. And that's the exciting part of it, sir. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, two things, two things buried in there, by the way. One is that I, I love the way you describe that. You know, teaching a first intro, handling a confirmation phone call, handling asking for a referral, handling the first lesson, 
all of it is exactly like your psychic. It's exactly like running your form. It's exactly like a sparring match. If you don't practice it, how can you possibly expect to master it? <laughs> and, and, and if you don't have a consistent baseline, you never know what you can test. And, and here's a fundamentally important you know, lesson, I think, for everybody that, that you just mentioned. If you have seven people on staff and everybody does it differently, how do you know what works and what doesn't work, right? If, if, if Johnny over here, if John over here's uh, conversion rate, if his enrollment rate is 92% and Sally's is 24%, well, what's going on, right? Who, who's doing what here, right? So you've got to have that standardization and you've got to train that standardization all the time. It's, it's exactly like you said, a round kick, exactly like a round kick. What happens if you stop practicing your round kick after you've done it for 10 years? What happens if you stop practicing it for a year? Yeah. Right. Your hip starts to hurt a little more and you, you know, your foot. Like you, yeah, exactly. Right. So one of the things that I did in, in my schools, I think is very useful is I divided the first, the, the 12 most important tasks for staff members. Well, for like a level one staff member, you know, handling an, in, uh, an info call, handling uh, an info call with objections handling a walk-in, handling the first lesson, handling setting the appointment for a second lesson, you know, whatever it might be, right? So you chunk your most, most important functions. And I did 12, 12 units because I thought after about three months, they're all going to forget what I taught them last three months. <laughs> so we did one, one unit a, a week, right? Every Monday morning staff meeting. So the first Monday of the month is intro, in, in, info call. Second is the info call with objections. The third is handling a walk-in. The fourth is handling the first intro. The third is, right? And then 12 weeks from now, we start back at the top and work through them again. And then start back at the top and work through them again, right? Uh, in your case, opening a new location, you train every one of them all the time because they're new people, right? Yes. But, you know, once they've been there for a few years, a, a few months, a few years, don't forget that you have to retrain that stuff. This stuff is, it atrophies. Absolutely. It's not managed over time. So I think, I think that's like Absolutely. super well said. I appreciate that. Um, so, sir, you know what? Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I think we've accomplished all of our, uh, all the big lessons that we wanted to really sort of walk through. I think there's, I think about eight or nine things in here so far that if I'm a martial arts school operator, uh, that I really want to make sure I have in my portfolio, things I really want to make sure I'm focused on, uh, especially if I'm looking at growing my location and perhaps even expanding to multiple locations. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate that. I really thank appreciate you being so able much, to Pastor, us. Roy. My pleasure. It is an honor to be able to speak with you. I love it. I follow you all the time. I'm just so glad I get to be part of it, sir. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's a it's a really good story, and I think you know if if you face and overcome an obstacle, that's something that can help. I don't know how many others do the same thing, right? This is exactly like martial arts class, right? There's nothing different, and and if if there's no reason, if you learn how to defend against this. There's no reason that, you know, we shouldn't make sure that everybody knows how to do that, right? Make sure that they, they're armed with those skills. So thank you again so much. And for anybody listening, um, I'd say two things really quickly here. You know, we, we, we did discuss today a lot about systemizing and automating the front end part of your marketing for your martial arts school. And that for, uh, for our guest today has been a big uh, shift in paradigm really helping him elevate himself now to the CEO role rather than just the chief cook and bottle washer role. I ain't saying bottles ain't getting washed, but right, they're, they're still there. But but it's about now being able to focus on some of the bigger tasks, some of the more valuable and important things to growing an organization, to, to creating you know, a large location, many schools, whatever the case might be. You've got to be thinking strategically. You've got to take time out of the trenches to watch the troops, right? And the minute you take your eye off that, you know, it's bad, right? You, you got to make sure you have time to focus on that. And, and, you know, his ability to manage his team's energy and his own energy is really critically important at this juncture. And so certainly the iron roll process has been very useful and helpful for them to be able to do that. If you want more information about that, I'll go ahead and put the link below this video or just check out iEnrollStudents.com, I with the letter I. We'd be happy to take a look at your specific school. What we've learned is that every school is different. Every school is unique. Every area is slightly different. And, and this is very much like a puzzle. And we're looking at assembling the right puzzle for, the, for each school individually. So uh, it really takes uh, taking a look at your school and your area and, and everything that's happening to put together the right pieces of the puzzle. But we can absolutely help you, you know, accom accomplish that level of automation and systemization that you might need in your, in your location. So check out iEnrollStudents.com. Uh, and, uh, or you can give, give our team here a call at 800-275-1600. And we ha we'd be happy to take a look at that for you and see if there's, there are areas where we can help you with that. Uh, but again, thank you again so much, sir, for the time. I really appreciate it. We'll speak again soon. Thanks, everybody.
Thanks all. Uh, my mouse is now not working. Where is my mouse? My mouse stopped working. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Let's see if I can figure out how, how to literally stop working. 